What's up, fam? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Tim, and this is the W Podcast. We're so excited that you joined us. We have another amazing episode, and one of the thoughts that this episode is really going to talk about is the idea of treating your boyfriend or your girlfriend or one day your future spouse worse than you treat anybody else in your life. Now, I know that may sound contradictory because it's like, no, that's the person I'm going to give my all to. But sometimes giving our all can actually mean giving our worst. Because when you think about all, that encompasses all that we are. And sometimes that includes the worst sides of us. And there should be a familiarity, there should be a safety with the person that you love, the person that you call your person. But at the same time, we have to be mindful that we're not allowing the worst sides of us to come out and in a way abuse our partner when in reality, they should be the person that we give to the most, that we love the most, that we cherish the most. There's a weird tension, a dynamic that you have to balance between this is a safe place for me, and at the same time, this is a place that I honor and cherish. But in order to even do any of that, you gotta make sure that you're taking care of yourself. And a lot of this episode is gonna focus on taking care of you. How do you make sure that you're in a good place? Because the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? You can't love somebody else well if you don't love yourself well. So we're gonna talk about that today, unpack that a little bit, and I'm hoping that you'll ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? How can I work on this right now? Whether I'm single, whether I'm dating, whether I'm engaged, whether you happen to be married watching this, what can you do right now to love yourself better? And in turn, your relationship, whether it's now or in the future, it will be better as well. You really got to be selfless to have a good marriage. Mm. Now, if you're watching this, you probably aren't married yet. And if you are married and you're watching this, we really love you. Shout out yeah. to you. But if you're watching this and you're not married yet, like you hear people talk about, oh, like in marriage, you got to be selfless. In marriage, you really got to serve your spouse. And like, that is really true. But the problem is a lot of people don't do that. And why I'm bringing this up is because if you can't hear it in Pauline's voice, she's sick. Uh, she's been sick. Her and my son were sick. And then when you're in a relationship and you're married and you got kids, if they sick, you gonna end up getting sick. So Pauline was sick. And listen, y'all, she, she was at that point where I don't know if you ever had this. When you're sick and you can't breathe out your nose. So she was having a hard time sleeping. And there was one night I was up a little later watching TV and I noticed that she had actually fell asleep. This was like night three of the sickness. She had actually fell asleep. And I was like, man, like I know she's been telling me she hasn't been sleeping well because she can't breathe. And then it's hard because she can't breathe. She's up while I'm already mid sleep. And you know, I don't know about you, but I'll be out here moving yeah. mid sleep. So it's hard for her to even get any type of rhythm, even if she does fall asleep when she's sick. So I was like, you know what? Let me sleep on the couch tonight. Mind you, who wants to sleep on the couch? Like, y'all hear the jokes all the time in, in movies and TV shows. You sleep on the couch tonight. There's a reason for that. It's not comfortable. So I was like, you know what? Let me sleep on the couch tonight because it really will help her be able to get sleep if I don't come in there and interrupt her. So that was really big for me. Just that remembrance that I had to have. If you want to have a good relationship and you truly want to care for your partner, you're going to have to sacrifice sometimes and do some things that are not comfortable for you. Yeah. So good. And I am so grateful that he did let me sleep alone the bed that night like, because it did help. Because um, y'all know it's not fun. You can't breathe out your nose. I am not a mouth, a mouth breather. I'm getting all dry, all that. But yeah, so good. Definitely agree that you want to be selfless and marry somebody that's selfless. For me, this past week, the big lesson was it's okay to take two steps forward and one step back. Last week was definitely a step back for me. I have a lot of goals, a lot of things that I'm working on right now. And being sick definitely derailed those goals. And I was trying to like not beat myself up and just like be gracious towards myself because being it's never a good time to get sick, but it's just a part of life and it's okay to have to adjust deadlines and adjust timelines um, or to take care of yourself. Like I was very tempted to just kind of like push through and do what I could being sick, but I was like, that's not right for me. You know, like it's not, I'm not going to be a good mom, a good wife, like good to anybody if I'm not at my best. 
so like taking a step back and not feeling guilty about that like that mom guilt um about being sick because the only reason why i'm sick is because of my mom joshua definitely coughed on me real good sneezed, sneezed right in your face sneezed right in my eye <laughs> um which is what and that next day i was sick so y'all learn how to bob and weave girl oh my gosh <laughs> You know, y'all, if y'all have been around toddlers, you know, try to avoid them. But yeah, so just for me, learning how to shake off that guilt and learning, like, it's okay to take care of myself. Like, I'm valuable. It's okay to, it's okay to adjust timelines and adjust expectations um, in order to take care of myself. All right. I hope you enjoyed that clip. One of the themes, or two themes in there, really, is one, how to process your emotions, how to process how you're feeling, how you're treating yourself. And then two, how well do you bounce back from adversity? And both of those impact the quality of your marriage because, listen, you will never, listen, your marriage will never be healthier than you are inside of the marriage. Like, it, a healthy marriage requires two healthy people coming together as one to build that marriage. So if you're not healthy, your marriage can only be but so healthy, but so great, but so amazing. So that's why it's so important now, if you're single, please continue to work on yourself. Read that book, go to therapy, talk to your pastor, submit to God, whatever it is that's gonna help you take that next step, doing it now helps set you up to have a better marriage in the future. A phrase that one of my good friends told me was to be your own biggest cheerleader. And even deeper than that, I feel like the Lord was highlighting to me that no one's going to take you seriously until you take yourself seriously. So I'm learning to do that. I'm learning to cheer myself on. I'm learning to affirm myself before other people do. And I don't need other people's affirmation or approval. And that's okay. And I and it's part of a you know journey of loving myself. So that's what stood out to me and what I'm learning this week specifically is to be my own cheerleader. Yeah, that's good. I think for me, the biggest thing I took away from this week, and y'all heard it before, it sounds cliche, but it's harder to do in real life. You ever heard somebody say, don't get too high and don't get too low? Yeah. To be honest, y'all, Wednesday this week was one of the hardest weeks, the hardest days of my life. Just mentally, just so many things I'm trying to do, so many things I'm trying to learn. And it can be tough when you're trying to figure out how do you do this? How do you do that? Yeah. And if I would have let Wednesday define me and define my whole week, then this week would have been one of the worst weeks of my life. Mm. But instead of letting it define me, I just took it on the chin. Wednesday was a tough day. But guess what? The word says that there's new mercy every morning. Yeah. So I woke up the next day and it was a better day. I felt clearer. Now, what also helped was that night, instead of trying to work, instead of trying to think, I just watched a movie. I just rested. I just chilled. And I think that could be a word for somebody. You've just been grinding so hard. You've just been trying to make it work. And sometimes you just got to chill and allow life to really go by you just need to pause need to think you need to take a breath watch a movie talk to your friend go to your favorite restaurant you need to do something that will help you take your mind off of everything that's going on because sometimes we can be so enthralled in everything that's happening in our life that we can not fully be able to process what's going on what i mean by that is i can be so engaged in trying to do the right thing at work that I'm not able to easily see a fix because I'm, I'm, I gotta figure, I gotta do, I gotta, and it's like, yo, if you just chilled out, yeah, you too close to the problem. It would come easier to you. So that's the one thing I learned. Hopefully, it encourages you because you may be watching this and you may have had a hard week. You may have had something go wrong in your family life or relationship life, your dating life. Just take a step back, reevaluate, and then you may be able to come back stronger. Yeah. So good. It's so easy for us to get enthralled and get kind of foggy minded with everything going on. But it's you know that bad. as a mom. I do. As a mom, there's going to be some days that's tough, boy. <laughs> Especially when you got toddler. I mean, even I'm sure at other ages too. At every stage, I'm sure it's hard. All right. So before we go into this next clip, let me just say, 
for our audio only podcast fam, I need you to listen to this because we're going to be explaining why we look a little crazy on the video. <laughs> and we just had to make sure that people knew why we looked that way so they wouldn't be distracted from the video. But I'm super excited for this clip. Check this out. I'm sure y'all are like, where the heck are you going? <laughs> why are you dressed like that? We are actually. It's hot in her. <laughs> Who do you look like? Who's your inspiration? It's getting hot in her. Now, don't judge me. I don't got the I don't got the uh, band aid, but I'm, I'm saving that because I might have my own 2000s party one day, and I, I gotta save that for me. You ever have something happen in your life by force? <laughs> like you learn something, not because you was like trying to study and be a student, but because you just got really tired and your butt had to sit down. Now, thankfully, it wasn't nothing dramatic like a hospital or something like that for me. There were definitely some things this week that I decided not to do simply because I was tired. I was like, I need a mental rest. And that's really the biggest takeaway I have from this week is we got to be intentional with rest, y'all. Like, I know we're in a generation where it's hustle, it's grind, trying to build a business, trying to raise family, like all that stuff. And it's important. But if you're not going to be able to last, it's really not that important. Like, if I'm not going to be able to be a good husband to Pauline, if I'm not going to be able to be a good employee, if I'm not going to be a good CEO of my business, like, I have to be able to slow down and take a break so that I can recharge and actually have something to give. Some of y'all relationships have been suffering, not because you're a bad person, not because you don't love the person, but because you don't really have much to give. Because you've been going, you've been going, you've been going, and you haven't slowed down enough to really relax, pause, and get whole and healthy and just take a break and take a breather. Life be hard, y'all. That's the biggest thing I learned. What about you? Right. No, that's so good. Rest is so important, and I think that it's it's a hard thing to the hard thing to accept or to work into our daily schedules. That was a big lesson for me this week as well was to take care of myself and not be so achievement based and focus on what I'm doing, what I'm achieving, but to love myself and give myself what I need, which is really hard for me as a mom, as a wife. But that was something that the Lord had kind of essentially pulled me aside this week to tell me about was, yeah, you need to, you need to take care of you and you need to give yourself what you need instead of focusing on, you know, what you deserve. And I think that that that's just a great lesson in love. So that's what I learned this week. Let me ask you this, babe. So you talked about how rest was a big thing for you as well. Now that you know that, do you have any idea of what you plan to do next week? Because I think sometimes we learn something, but then we don't always adjust and we don't always make the adjustments to make sure we implement it in our life. So for you, maybe you haven't thought about it yet. I'm putting you on the spot, but I'm just curious. Like, what are you planning to do next week to not repeat what you did this week? Yeah, we talked about me having my own day, a couple hours in the evening that I can have to myself to just relax. So we're going to implement that. I think we said Thursdays is going to be my night to chill and to be to myself and kind of have a, a mental rest. So that's what I'll be doing. What about you? Yeah. Um, Practical application here. I mean, we started having a night where I'm just not doing any work for a mental rest. That's really just the play I'm trying to work right now. I don't really have, I was thinking today, like maybe I may start doing like one, at least for the rest of the year. And it kind of works out because of Christmas and Thanksgiving. Maybe I'll have one weekend where I'm not doing something just so my mind can be uh, sharp and fresh. Cause every night I'm trying to think about something, do something. So that's what I actually been thinking about. That was good. I hope y'all didn't miss that bar that Pauline dropped in the beginning of the clip. Focus on what you need, not what you deserve. Sometimes we get so caught up in what we deserve, not realizing that we deserve to go to hell, technically, if it wasn't for Jesus coming in and dying for us and saving us. So sometimes you can't get so caught up in what you deserve because, first of all, God is a God of grace. Yes, there is reaping and sowing. So you do need to be accountable for what you're doing and mindful of what you're doing because that is a real reality. But also at the same time, the reality is that a lot of times God doesn't give us what we deserve because he's so merciful. And that's the the weird thing about Christianity, right? At, at one moment, you're saying what you do matters. And at another moment, you're saying what you do doesn't always matter. And that's because Christianity is this and that, not this or that. So just be mindful as you're going throughout your life, if you make a mistake, sometimes the consequences will come to you. And sometimes you'll be shown mercy in that area. 
but not getting too down on yourself, whether you're showing mercy or not, to continue to process, continue to move forward and be the best that you can be is all you can do. And in the end, when you continue to grow, continue to get better, like I said throughout this video, your relationship will be so much better for it because you can't have that relationship goals picture that you're picturing without doing intentional work. So this has been an episode of the W Podcast. We'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching this video. To get more Christian relationship advice, subscribe to our channel. And make sure you check out our other videos as well.